it in the hands for review. Okay, we are going to bring this May 22nd, 2024 solar application committee meeting to order. And I guess the appropriate thing to do would be stand and say the Pledge of Allegiance. Pledge of Allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Well, thank everyone for coming. Um, I think the, the goal that I have in mind, and please, committee members, any input that you choose to give will be welcome greatly, um, is just to kind of review an application from Miami County, which appears to be a neighboring county that had an application, and then to take a look at the, um, the solar application check sheet that Ryan Mallott had put together at some point in the past. Um, for us to review. I think um, from my perspective, I didn't feel that there was an application uh, that was developed when I was on the APC and I'd asked a question about an application, the response that I, would, that I received was, it's in the ordinance. And I, I really believe that the uh, application is the responsibility of the Area Planning Commission, and that's what has generated the motivation to come up with an application for a solar company to, to complete rather than it just be in the ordinance. So, you know, hopefully we can get away with being able to develop an application. So the goal tonight is simply to um, get in the hands of the committee and, you know, if uh, community members would like to have a copy, I'm sure we can post that on the APC website for your review as well and um, to take a look at the checklist that Mr. Malott had put together and just to have some general discussions in regard to in the development of an application, what is it that Grant County residents would like to know about the companies that are coming into our county? Um, and I know that just we've had some general discussions uh, with some members here and, you know, we'll take note of those and try and integrate those into um, the application as it's developed. So with that being said, uh, Ryan is actually, um, I guess there was a packet put together, but it seems to be a little bit um, unorganized. So Ryan's going to get us copies of um, the two documents that I asked him to generate. Uh, so with that being said, um, I would just like to take some notes in regard to what it is that we would want to know about a solar company that's coming into our county. And I'm not going to hold, this is a public meeting, you know, we're not going to have any order in which anyone can you know, speak, no time like that. If you guys got something to say, we want to hear what you've got to say. So please, any thoughts? Come on up, Michael. I don't even know what you got to sign in. I don't think there's a pad up there. There's a little pad up here. <laughs> Michael Duke, Grant County, Bradford Pike, I'll use I don't want to sound like a curmudgeon or, um, and, and there do well, but I actually have been questioning in my mind uh, since about two months ago, maybe two and a half months ago, when I heard the drainage board members talking about, starting to talk about solar and a setback and on ditches or pile. And in my mind, and the county maintained ditches and pile, whether right. it's an open yeah. ditch or buried ditch, it yeah, would be. That's, that. that's not where I'm going. Okay. In the back of my mind, when I heard that discussion, I was cognizant that the commissioners had voted for a six month moratorium. That moratorium, by my count, ends August 5th. Is it proper, given? the commissioners enacting that moratorium, that any discussion at the drainage board, at the APC, at the commissioners' meetings and such be undertaken at this time 
and not waiting till August 5th when the moratorium is off. I grant you that the uh, words of the, the passage of the, the moratorium motion was very general, probably subject to interpretation. I'm cognizant of that, cognizant that you know, it's better to be prepared and um, ready to hit the ground running when the moratorium ends around August 5th. But you know, so general discussion maybe. But any actions taken, anything, any votes taken, uh, I think are inappropriate until the moratorium is off. And I just offer you that as one person's thoughts. Reflects my sentiments exactly, sir. Yeah. Anybody want to comment to that? What was the motion? What's that? What was the motion? It's not a motion. There's no motion. I mean, just yeah, put the moratorium on. What the motion? Oh, the, the commissioners. On what? The commissioners put a moratorium on. On what? The solar uh, development process. Any no applications. No applications. Yes. That's what I thought it was for. No further applications. It doesn't. I, yeah. I mean, you shouldn't be getting your ducks in a row at that time. All right. I'm sorry. That's you. Roy Creek. Um, but anyway, that's, you know, if the, if the moratorium was just for the applications, which was my understanding of it, I mean, that's, that's fine, but obviously other business and getting ducks in a row and providing information to the public and anything you can do during a moratorium period seems like it's logical, obviously, that we could do that, would do that, that we'd want to do that. And the drainage board needs to figure out whether there needs to be a certain you know, a setback from ditches and, and county tile, and obviously this would be a perfect time, I would think, to do it. But there again, I'm not sure what the object of the moratorium was. So, but if it was just for application, the moratorium seems like it's a separate subject. So. Well, the moratorium does put anything solar on hold. As for far as morning. applications, and that, which would be the first step, but um, we also have a lot to do, and I think some of us share the opinion that we probably should get going on something. Right now, the Area Plan Commission will be in charge of an application, the comprehensive plan, and amendments mm -hmm. to the solar ordinance. So there's a lot of work to do. Mm -hmm. So, and uh, I think that uh, doing nothing during the moratorium period uh, leaves us with an awful lot on our plate at once. Yeah, we agree. Thank you. Uh, the comment I'd like to make about this <clears throat> is meeting minutes, written meeting minutes are extremely critical, and this, would, this is a point to that. And I'm going to hand on that on, on every council and every meeting group, okay? Is we said there was a moratorium, and now no one can decide exactly what that moratorium is. Was it moratorium on no more applications? No moratorium on what? What was actually said and what was the motion exactly? And without meeting minutes and meeting minutes rolled over in a timely manner, it's it's difficult to come down and we could save a lot of time if we just knew exactly what that was. The yeah. folks that put the moratorium in place, the only people who can do that are the commissioners, mm -hmm. not right. APC. And so if, I might add, if we were to do a, excuse me? If, if I might add, um, I was at that commissioner's meeting and it was a very simple one sentence motion that said, we will place a six month moratorium on solar. You can, I've gone back and looked at the WebEx um, recording of that to listen because the minutes of the commissioners and that commissioner's meeting were not available at the time. I, I think they're available now, but uh, two months ago, the commissioners were something like four to six weeks behind in the minutes being uh, uh, written or, or produced and approved. So if you look at WebEx, it's just a very general statement, and that's why I said it, it was, you know, I, I questioned in my mind myself what it meant. Mm -hmm. Now, I reviewed the film too, video, and uh, 
I'm speaking from memory, shortly after that meeting, so it was a few months ago, and I thought that they, after they kind of made that first statement, then they clarified that this does not include residential or small business use. Does anyone else remember that? I would agree with that. Ed. Okay, all right. I would agree with that. So that's the, and that was about the extent of it. Yes. Yeah, you know, of their motion, and and then they voted. Mr. Spitz, it, it, the point of my comment was meeting minutes are really very important and it can save us a lot of time discussing what was met by what. And, you know, that's that's my point. Yeah, I would and, and some some committees and, and councils are much better at it than others, so. Our own ABC minutes have been very questionable. Mm -hmm. And um, and not not accurate. I'm I'm sure. I mean, it's hard to disagree with. <laughs> I guess my comment to the discussion so far is: it's my understanding that the minute that that moratorium is lifted, in the event that a solar company wanted to file an application, we are grandfathered in under the current ordinance. Now that scares me to death. So. And I think that would be my personal motivation to go ahead and, and do some planning, have some discussions, and um, you know, be, be prepared to see if we can make some amendments that are going to better uh, address the concerns that the Grant County citizens have. Is it not possible for us in our office to post in writing that our office? at this time will not receive nor accept any applications from or industrial. <clears throat> so I, I don't know that we can do that. Um, well, I mean, that's a question for our legal counsel as to whether we can do that or not. Could we check that? Yes. I think that'd be important. Yes, and I will check with uh, Mr. Glickfield in regard to what the basis of a moratorium is Michael, in regard to whether we can continue to have discussions and and so forth. So those will be, let's see, those will be David questions. Now, in regard to the commissioner's meeting, I did not uh, make it, I was farming. Um, is it my understanding uh, that the comment was made that amendments were going to come back to the APC? Ryan, did you hear that from the commissioners? Yeah. Yes. Can, can you, what was your take on that? Uh, the drainage board, yeah. drainage board uh, they're going to put forth uh, an amendment to, they put a resolution together to the commissioners to put forth a re recommendation on uh, the setbacks from the regulated drains. State code is 75 feet, both sides. They want to make a re resolution to do 150 on both sides. So they did a resolution to the commissioners because the amendment has to come from one of the legislative bodies. So there it goes to them to send to us. So that resolution has been filed? Uh, no. Okay. Mark can can it, it be Mark. filed if we're in a moratorium? That's for, for an amendment? Mm -hmm. Yes. It can be. Yeah. Because he's, he's, they, are, they are bringing it to us to look at, to put forth to public hearing. <laughs> So it'd be like me bringing you an ordinance. I'm bringing it to you to review. It's for you to put it forth to a public hearing. And then from there, the clock starts. So when they, when they bring it to you, you've got 60 days to get it to a public hearing. And then another 60 days to make a recommendation on it. Once you guys do your recommendation, then there's 10 days for us to certify it to the commissioners. Then they've got 90 days to act on it. And should they, should they amend it or send it back? Once they do that, they would certify it, send it back, and then you've got 45 days to act on it from there before it would go back. Question, Mr. 
president or chairman, I guess, of the committee. <clears throat> Do we have, in this instance, perhaps the cart before the horse? Should we not be considering amendments at this point? The application, et cetera, that you're talking about are inside the ordinance that the commissioner adopted, or at least that's, that, was the that, that is their there. intent, right? So probably the work that we're doing here, uh, if we were to go to the amendment process and be successful, then at that time, the application process would be removed outside of, outside of the ordinance and then would be in our, you know, uh, in our jurisdiction. At this point in time, you know, we need to be, I think, dealing with the amendment process that gives us the opportunity, gives the commissioners the opportunity to hear to disassociate the application from the ordinance itself so that we do have the opportunity to make decisions about this. Well, I think the question that I have, and Ed, you help me, is they have identified a specific amendment to the ordinance, correct? correct? And that resolution will cite only that specific amendment. Right. So if there were other amendments, then there would have to be right. a resolution uh, filed to yeah. cover what other areas that we wanted to consider amendments to, correct? Any, any legislative body ought to make him propose an amendment to it. I'm sorry? Any legislative body can propose. I think you've got Van Buren has one they're wanting to look at. Uh, Mayor Hall has one they're wanting to look at. Yeah. Mayor Hall has one they're wanting to look at. So, but I mean, again, can we stack that. resolutions for amendments? Yeah. Okay. But I think we ought to be dealing with amendments before we deal with this because anything that happens within the amendment process may totally change mm -hmm. what we're dealing here with the application. Yeah. So yeah. anyway, just a thought. Well, and but keep in mind, Bob, when we established the solar committee, the resolution hadn't been filed by the commissioners for the yeah, okay. okay. So I, I understand I'm, where you're coming, but I'm, I'm because thinking. this resolution puts it on hold just as a moratorium would, correct? Right. Once, once the resolution is filed, we, there will be no applications received due to the fact that it's in the resolution state. Yeah, we, yeah, we can't take any development in moratorium, but that doesn't mean you can't amend it. It doesn't stop us from amending the ordinance. But, but we can, can't, can't, can't. we take development plans or applications when there's a re resolution filed for an amendment to the ordinance? That comes back to the APC. That's part of the ordinance that we talked about. If we feel that someone is trying to come in to circumvent the ordinance, then that gives us the six month, up to six month moratorium. We can move on. I don't think that answers my question. Is that if if the if the commissioners file a resolution to amend the drainage distance, does that put a hold on any applications coming from solar companies? No. It doesn't. No. What does put a hold on applications coming from solar companies? The moratorium. The moratorium. So if the APC goes into the amendment process through resolution, does that put a stop on receiving? It can. Our, or our ordinance gives. Our APC. ordinance allows us to do that. Right. So if, okay. we're, if we're doing amendments, again, to keep from circumventing, if we have someone that comes in and doesn't like what you're doing, so I'm going to try to hurry and get my development in, you have the authority as an area planning commission to put a six month moratorium on applications while you're in the amendment process, which we're going to want to do. Right. That. So we put a six month, we file a resolution for a six month um, amendment process. What, what's the other timelines that go along with that? Once, in other words, we've got six months as the APC to come up with whatever amendments that we want to submit to the right. commissioners. Up to six months. Up to six months. Right. So at the at the end of that six months, we've got our amendments 
having listened to the citizens of Grant County and their concerns, and we formulate these amendments and we file them with the commissioners. How, what's the time frame from there? You've got it for six months, and then once you guys put forward your recommendation, we've got 10, 10 days to certify it to the commissioners. Commissioners have 90 days to act on it, so we, we get into that same 90 days to act on it. If, if they amend it and send it back, then we've got 45 days for us to act on it before we send it back, and then they either choose to accept it or, or vote their own. Okay. To get to Mrs. Plank, she's been up here. I'm, I know. It's okay. Well, I, no. I hope this is educational information or good information for everybody. Okay, Mrs. Plank. Beth Plank. Um, <laughs> we have lived out in Swayze um, since 1996. Um, we moved over and we built and developed our property. And uh, behind us is a proposed solar farm. Um, the farmer was out there this afternoon as we were leaving and the dust was flying. Um, we are opposed to solar. But as I hear your discussion, it brings to mind the confusion with the whole process. We've heard ordinances. We've heard, um, and I think the, the voters spoke very clearly in May when the commissioners that have been involved in this discussion um, lost their seats because the voters spoke. Um, and I think hearing the confusion, uh, we don't have a comprehensive plan. What are we what are we doing? How do we know what we're doing? We don't know what we're doing. Any project, and I work in hospice and even in hospice, before you have a project, you have a plan. We have no plan. And hearing this confusion just makes me, which I agree with Dr. Bothwell, the cart is before the horse. And we are headed for more trouble, in my opinion, with the confusion. Um, I have shared with some the drainage situation. My husband was teaching at Oak Hill when there were the solar panels put in there. They broke all the tiles and the high school flooded. That's what we're looking at as property owners. And that's what concerns us in that this confusion, who did, does what, delays, moratoriums, and now we've got new commissioners. I think in fairness to the taxpayers and the new commissioners, whatever we can do to say time out needs to be done. The taxpayers need to clearly understand what is the ordinance, because I've heard so many different ones. I don't, what is the ordinance? Setbacks, I think that's still being discussed. Mm -hmm. um, application, why are we taking applications? We don't even have a plan. So it just concerns me as a taxpayer that something is being forced, in my opinion, on Grant County to 